Stanford University. Okay, well, welcome to Lecture 15 of CS193P for fall of 2013-14. And uh, our primary topic today is going to be the map kit, which is kind of the UI on what we talked about uh, on Monday. As part of that, though, and especially in the demonstration that I do, I'm going to show you two things about segues that are pretty important. One is how to fire off a segue from code. So far, all the time that we've made a segue go, we just control dragged from something in a storyboard to another storyboard, and then we clicked on that something it would segue. So now we're going to be able to uh, fire off a segue from in code. And then I'm also going to teach you a new kind of segue today, which is the embed segue. Now I'm going to demo that uh, as well in a big demo that shows you all the map stuff and the manual segue and the embed segue. Okay? So that's what's on tap for today. And um, so map kit. So what is map kit? Map kit is basically user interface uh, for locations and its primary class is this UI view uh, called an MK map view. The whole map view stuff is in a different framework called the map kit framework. When you, you want to use the map kit framework, you have to actually explicitly go into your project settings and set it to be linked. Uh, otherwise, all these classes like MK map view won't be there. And I'm going to show that in the demo how you do that. Um, so inside of the map view, you have these little pins. Okay, they look a little red pin there. They can be different colors. Um, these are called uh, annotation views. Okay, so every annotation view in there, and you, you can customize this. You can subclass annotation view to make it not look like a pin if you want. Um, but these annotation views are responsible for showing some place on in the world. And they, all, they have a pin, but then they also have this little call out. If you click on them, you see that little white bar right there. Um, and that call out can be customized a little bit. Uh, the title that's in it, and it can have a little subtitle. And also, it can have left and right accessory views. So this one has a left accessory view, which is an image view, and has a right accessory view, which is a little uh, button that you can click on. So in our demo, we're going to do all of this. Okay, and we're going to cover all of these various parts of uh, what's going on. But the main thing to understand is how you create a map view and how you put these things on the map. So map view, just alloc init, or more often, we drag it out um, from the palette in uh, Xcode. And the, m the way we put the pins on there is we add these things called annotations. Okay? So an annotation is really just an ID that responds to this protocol. You see this MK annotation protocol up here. So any object in your entire application that responds to this protocol can just be dropped onto the map view. Okay, so what's in this protocol? Very simple. It's got a couple optional methods, the title and subtitle. So in that little white call out that we saw, that's going to be the title and subtitle there. And then it's got a very important required uh, property, which is the coordinate. So the coordinate is just the latitude and longitude, as specified by the CL location coordinate C struct. And so any uh, object that can answer these, really just this one question of the coordinate, uh, but usually we want title and subtitle too, um, can be uh, thrown on a map. And for example, in the demo that we're going to do, we're going to extend Photomania. I'm just going to throw photo objects in there. In fact, photo objects already implement title and subtitle. So all we really need to do and make a photo object be an MK annotation and respond to that protocol is to implement the required coordinate method. And that's what we're going to do. And then we can just throw photos on the map. We don't have to make any other special uh, classes or anything. We just throw the photos themselves up there. Um, when you're setting the annotations, uh, this property, there's a property on MK map view, which is an NS array of annotations. That's all the annotations that the map view is showing. But that's read only property, so you can't set the array that way. You have to use these add annotation methods or an annotations, and same thing, removing them. So you add and remove them with these methods. Uh, you don't manipulate that uh, array uh, directly. Uh, it's a pretty good idea if you can, if you have the information, to add all of your annotations up front to the map view. Adding an annotation is actually pretty low overhead, especially if that annotation is not on screen currently. And that's because those MK annotation views, the little pin that does the call out, those things are reused like a table views rows. Okay? So if you have a ton, uh, hundreds of annotations but only five of them are on the screen, you're only going to create five of those MK uh, annotation views, and as you kind of move around in the world and they go off screen, they'll get reused for new ones. Okay, so letting the map view know all the annotations uh, up front is nice to help it manage uh, its internal 
uh, performance or whatever. So it's generally recommended, but you don't always know. Sometimes you don't know all the annotations up front. It's happening uh, in real time or something. Um, so what do annotations look like? They generally look like a pin, but uh, there's a lot of methods that you can call in MK annotation view, and you can also subclass MK annotation view to draw something different in a pin. And this call out is a little more difficult to subclass and make different. Uh, so if you can get by with just doing this left and right call out business, then that's good because that's easy. If you want to do more, then it's kind of beyond the scope of this class and you're going to have to do some searching around. It's doable, but uh, doing something different than that basic call out with title, subtitle, left and right accessory view is a little more uh, difficult. Um, what, the contents of that call out are kind of interesting. When do you set those up? Well, there is a map, okay, the map view has a delegate we're going to talk about, and one of the map view delegate methods is uh, essentially uh, build this MK annotation view for me, including the left and right accessory views, you know, alloc init those as well. And you can load those up at the time you build it, or you can wait until the pin is pressed to load those up. Now, why would you want to wait till the pin is pressed to load up those annotation views. Well, let's look at this example right here. You got that thumbnail. What if that thumbnail is, requires a flicker fetch? Okay, well, you don't want to fetch that photo for all the pins in the entire world, or even all the pins that ha are visible on screen. You only want to load that flicker, do that flicker fetch when a pin is clicked on. So there's this delegate method in the map view called map view did select annotation view that get called when you click on a pin. That's a good place to like do that flicker fetch. Okay, load up the call out. And we're going to do that in the demo, see how that works too. So we have these MK annotation views that are going to show these uh, ID MK annotations. How do those two get connected up? And they get connected up uh, by this map view delegate uh, method called map view view for annotation. And it returns a view for an annotation. This is almost exactly the same as self row and index path and table view. Okay, self row and index path, you give it a section in a row, it gives you back a UI table view cell, which is a view to display that row. Same thing here. It's going to give you an annotation, and you're going to give it back an MK annotation view to draw that annotation. Okay? Now, map view even has this mechanism, the DQ reusable thing, like table view has, right? So you can say sender, which is the map view there, DQ reusable annotation view with identifier, you give it an identifier, and if it's got a pin view, an MK annotation view that it got thrown off the screen and it can reuse it, it'll bring it in and give it to you here. Okay? But if it doesn't have any, then in the table view case, what happens? We, the system will automatically duplicate that prototype, right? You got the prototype cell that we set up in the storyboard and it'll duplicate it, but that doesn't happen here because we don't get to do that in the map view. The map view doesn't have all this mechanism for prototype cells and everything. So if that comes back uh, as nil, the DQ reusable thing, we have to alloc init the MK annotation view ourselves. So here, for example, I'm making an MK pin annotation view, which comes in iOS. It's the thing that can draw a red pin. I think it can do purple and one other color. And uh, I just alloc init it with init with annotation uh, reuse identifier. Now, the fact that I pass that reuse identifier there when I alloc init it means that th if it ever gets thrown out, it will come back in the reuse queue. So that's the thing that ties it to the reuse queue. So that's how things go back and forth. And then inside there, I would, might also set up my left and right accessory views. Maybe not put the content in there, like the image, but I might create the UI image view, right, and set that to be the, the left one, and then set the button to be the right one. Okay? Outside of that, if not a view, okay, so now I have an A view either that I dequeued or that I made myself. Here's where I load up whatever is cheap to load up, okay, into that MK annotation view, okay? Either here you wouldn't want to do expensive things here. We're going to wait till it's clicked. Um, if, this, if it's something that's going to be played, displayed immediately about the pin, like you're using a different image than the pin, then obviously you need to set that here. You can't wait till it's clicked on uh, to load that up, okay? So uh, what kind of properties are there on this MK annotation view, the thing you're returning from that method? There's obviously the annotation. There's the left and right call out accessory view. You see those are just UI views that you can set. Um, there's whether it's enableable. There's even, there's even whether it's draggable. If the MK pin is draggable, then the annotation has to not only implement that coordinate method, it has to implement the set coordinate method. Okay, because you're going to pick that view up, pin up, and move it. When it drops, the annotation has to be moved, so it has to have a set coordinate method. Okay, otherwise, setting draggable here is not going to, uh, to work. And then the image that you see here, this property, that's the image that replaces the pin. 
Okay, that's instead of the pin. That's not the image that's in the callout. That's what we're going to put in the left accessory callout view, callout accessory view. Um, one thing that's kind of cool, if you set one of the accessory views to be a UI control, most notably a UI button, in, inherits from UI control, then yeah, you can put that button in the callout uh, accessory view and you can set up target action to it and that would all be fine, that would probably work. But since that's so common to do in an MK annotation view, there's a nice map view delegate method here called map view annotation view callout accessory control tapped that will get called if the person taps on it. So if you put a button in that little call out, if someone taps on it, this will get called. And you'll know which annotation view it was tapped on, right? And you won't have to do target action in that button. So we'll do that in the demo as well. Um, so did select annotation view. So this is the thing that gets called in the map view, delegate map view, it's called map view colon did select annotation view when a pin is clicked on. Okay, when someone actually picks on, clicks on that red pin. Now, it's going to automatically put the call out up as long as you set the property can show call out in the MK MK annotation view. By the way, if you don't implement that annotation view, view for annotation delegate method where you build the view, it'll automatically create one for you. It's just going to be a pin. It's going to have no left and right callout accessory, but it will show the callout with the title and the subtitle. Okay, that's what you get if you don't do anything. We'll do that in the demo too. So here in did select annotation view, I clicked on the pin. Here's where I might say, oh, let's do that flicker fetch. You know, at least let's fire it off in another thread here. Okay, we don't even waste, want to waste our time firing it off, and hopefully you're learning this in your homework too. You don't want to really fetch that thumbnail uh, for a row that's not on screen. It's going to waste the time to do that. Same thing here. Until someone clicks on that pin, we probably don't want to fire this flicker fetch off. When the flicker fetch comes back, just like the table view, we're going to have to be careful to make sure that this call out is still associated with this annotation and all that because these things get reused just like the table view. Uh, rows get reused. But anyway, so this is where you could load up your callout accessory views. You could also maybe segue here. Okay, this might be a place to segue, but you would have to segue in code here, and because there's no way uh, in storyboard to like control drag from the pins, they're not on screen until you start adding annotations. Um, so here we could manual segue, and we'll do that in the demo. Um, you can configure the way to map displays. Okay, first of all, the maps display is just like the maps app. So I'm not really going to go into all the things you can configure about the map, uh, but pretty much anything you can do in the maps app, including the 3D and rotating around, zooming in and out, all of that you can do with the map view, okay? Also including hybrid mode where it's a satellite image overlaid with roads and all that, that's all doable. So you want to definitely check out the MK map view uh, API to see all the incredible amount of things you can do. Uh, you can show the user's current location, okay, so it'll go use that core location stuff we talked about in the last lecture, find out where the user currently is using GPS, it'll show that uh, on your map. Uh, you can also restrict things about it, maybe you don't want the user to go into 3D mode, then you can turn the pitch enabled off and they won't be able to pitch, okay, they pitch by doing kind of a little two finger gesture there, they won't be able to do that if you turn this off. Same thing with rotate, maybe you always want north up and you don't want them to be able to rotate around to a different uh, thing, you can do that. So let's talk briefly about the 3D uh, of the maps and a big issue with this 3D, it's not really 3D, it's kind of 2.5D, right? This is a 2D map, but you know, it has some information there about buildings and their 3D representation. So kind of when you pitch up, you can show you a bit of a 3D representation. The main way you're going to interact with that in code is you're going to want to specify where the camera is, okay? Where is the camera that's looking at the streets or whatever uh, that the person looking at the map. And you can specify the camera via it, the, where a coordinate of where the camera is and which way it's pointing and how much it's pitched and what altitude it's at. But one of the easiest ways to do it is using this um, class method here, camera looking at center coordinate from I coordinate, I altitude. So the I coordinate and the I altitude, that's where your camera is. Where in the world, okay, using the coordinates, latitude and longitude, your camera is, how, what is the altitude of your camera in meters, and then what point are you looking at? You see how that's a way to set your camera? So you can do that to set your camera. One thing that's really cool about setting your camera, when you move from one place to another, you can kind of move your camera up into space and it'll animate that, and then come back down in the new place and it really orients your user where they are on the planet as they go from thing, from, uh, Location, location, question? No. Okay. Um, 
what about the region? What about where on the map we're, we're seeing? Okay, so the region is set with this property in MK map view called region. It's an MK coordinate region. An MK coordinate region is a center coordinate, latitude and longitude, and then a span. Latitude and longitude delta, how many degrees of longitude, how many degrees of latitude. That tells you uh, what's showing uh, in the map at any given time. Okay, and this is writable and readable. So you can set the map doing it and you can also find out wh where it is now after the user is done pinching or whatever. Um, you can also just have the map keep its current zoom and just move around by setting the center coordinate. Okay, this is all exactly what you would expect. This map class is super powerful. I mean, one of the more uh, action-packed uh, classes in all of iOS in terms of what it can do. And there's a ton of C functions to convert between, okay, this is just a view, map view is, an M, is a UI view, and of course you've got map coordinates in latitude and longitude, and then you've got view coordinates in X and Y. So sometimes you want to convert between those two, so it's got a bunch of C functions for doing that, and a bunch of methods as well, so that you can kind of find out what's going on, where they're touching, what's causing things, etc. So there's a lot, a lot in the map view there. Um, this map view delegate method, there's about 20 map view delegate methods. I can only cover the tiny few here, um, like view for annotation and did select uh, annotation view. But another interesting one is did change region. The reason this is interesting, this gets called, if the map is animating, moving around, changing the camera or something, when it's done, it'll be showing a new region, it'll send this message to you. Why is that important? Why would you want that? Well, because if you're going to do animation like I'm showing San Francisco and the user now wants to see New York, if you just say set the coordinate New York, it's going to go over to New York and the whole country is going to rip by in about a half a second. So it's not going to be much of an animation. But if you want to move your camera up over the United States a few thousand meters and then go back down, okay, you'll need to know when you get up to the top so that you can start the animation going down. And so region to animated will get called when you get to the top. You start the animation to move the camera to the top. When it gets to the top and the region is set, it'll call you this, and the region will be the whole United States, and then you can start your animation and go back down. Okay? And really, for nice apps, you might go up, down to New York, and then drive down the street. Okay? It's kind of really cool animation. That each of those steps, you want to use this to go to the next step, not the completion handlers of the animation things. The, this is much better because this is going to have all, it's going to do all the rotation when everything's settled down. It's almost like the settle down, the did pause we had in the dynamic animator. Okay? So that's an important method to know if you're going to do good map animation. All right, so in addition to uh, the map view, we also have searching. Okay? So local search, kind of like a geocoder, but lots more powerful. Uh, this basically lets you ha specify, lets your user specify a natural language query, like here I might create a search request for Ikes, okay, and I might search in a region which is Stanford campus, and then I fire this off. Of course, this is going to go over the network, not all this information is on your device. It's going to go over the network, it's going to do a fetch, going to figure this out, it's going to return to you and call you this completion handler. So you do it with start completion, with completion handler, it'll call the completion handler later. And you're going to get an array of MK map items. Okay, MK map items are basically things that uh, describe a place on the map. And they have inside of them an MK place mark, which is detail about a place on the map, like the postal code, uh, what region it's in, things like that. Um, MK map item is kind of cool because it, there's a method in it called open in maps with launch options. And if you send that to an MK map item, it will leave your app, launch the maps app, and show it there. So if you don't want to have a map view and all that stuff, you can still use this local search and then switch over to the maps app if you want to show them uh, that particular location. Yeah. Um, so it's also the, the map, is that also getting gone over the network or is that actually on your device? Yeah, so the question is what about the tiles of the map itself, all that map data. Yeah, that's clearly not on your phone as well. That's downloaded too. So when you first look at a place on the map, it's just going to be like a grid, kind of like the holodeck in Star Trek or whatever, right? just a grid, and then it's going to fill in with the tiles. Okay, and depending on how fast your network is, that's how fast it's going to download it. Um, so yeah, that's all happening though in the background. You don't even know. You have no idea what's going on. You can find out there are delegate methods that says, got this tile. You know, it'll tell you if you want to know, but generally you don't care. Um, 
There's also a way to get directions from one place to another. So you just create this MK uh, directions thing. Uh, you're going to specify an MK map item at the beginning, at the end, and it's going to again go asynchronously over the network and give you back a list of possible routes that you can take. And these routes are going to come back with text descriptions, you know, uh, take Highway 101 for this much or whatever. And also they're going to come back with MK polylines. An MK polyline, exactly what you would think, it's a bunch of lines. And this polyline, you can see the blue line here, or the purple lines. Um, will, it's basically a description of how to draw and go from place to place on the map, which is really, really cool. But it does beg the question, if I got a polyline in hand, how do I put it on the map? How do I draw it on the map? And the answer is, we draw on the map using overlays. Okay? So overlays are essentially descriptions of some shape that you want to draw on the map. So a polyline would be one, but you can also do circles, uh, you know, arbitrary polygons, things like that. And the way this mechanism works is you create this shape, like an MK polyline, you add an overlay, you see that add overlay, the level there is whether it's above the roads or uh, just above the, or above the labels, which is kind of on top of everything in the map. So you could have the polyline be on the roads and have things like 280 symbol be above it, which looks really cool. Um, but then the um, MK map view is going to ask you later, okay, now I need a renderer to draw this thing on the map, okay, an MK overlay renderer, which is a little bit like that MK annotation view, except for an MK overlay renderer is not a view, it's more of a mechanism for drawing on the map, and then that renderer will be used to render on the map. Now, these renderers come with iOS, there's a whole bunch of them, circle renderer, polyline renderer, polygon, uh, there's a tile renderer. Uh, the tile renderer is cool because it just renders bitmaps, Okay, and you can actually use it to replace the data instead of the data that comes from Apple. So if you had your own custom map, uh, you could have this tile in. It's a little bit involved because you're talking about being able to zoom in and out, and it has an API for that, but uh, you could possibly replace it. Or you might just want to tile some image over a certain place in the world. And so all that stuff is built in with this MK shape stuff in, uh, in MK overlays. So overlays are really pretty cool, and you can do a lot of stuff with them, so I encourage you to kind of look at that. Um, okay, so that's it for maps. I'm going to do a big demo of all this stuff so you can see all this stuff in action. But before I do that, there's another thing I'm going to do in the demo that I want to talk about briefly, which is embed segues. Okay, so, so far about segues, you know how to do push segues when you're a navigation controller. You know how to do uh, replace segues in a split view, although we didn't demo that, and it's pretty rare to actually replace the detail or the master. Uh, in a segue, we usually just leave the detail there and go look for it all the time, like we did in Photomania. Uh, popover segues, we saw that last time, okay, where we said we do a popover. And here's another one called embed segues. And, and embed segue is really cool. You create a UI view inside a view hierarchy of some view controller, and inside that view, UI view is the self.view of another view controller. Okay, so you basically take another view controller's self.view and embed it as a UI view inside another one. Okay, so that allows you to build pretty complex uh, views and still divide up the responsibility for a rectangle or area, rectangular area into MVCs. Okay, and I'm going to do this in the demo so you get a little better idea what we're talking about here. Xcode ma code makes it really, really easy to do this. You just go to the object palette and you're going to find something down there called container view. You drag that container view out into the view you want and then it's going to actually automatically create a little view controller with a segue to it. But you can control drag from this container to any VC you want to be embedded there. Okay? And then once you do that control drag, it's just like any other segue. It's just a segue. It has to be prepared. Right, because it's going to be displaying something in there, presumably. Uh, but otherwise, it's exactly the same. And not only is that segue exactly like any other segue, the view, that container you see right there, that's just like any other UI view. So in the host view controller, you can set its dot hidden. If you want to hide it, you can change its frame. Okay, you could animate its frame changing, moving around. You can do anything you want. Uh, it's just kind of this opaque UI view to you. It's part of your view hierarchy. You can take it out of the view hierarchy, put it back in. Okay, it's just that its contents are going to be drawn as the self.view of some other view controller. Okay, um, 
yeah, uh, the timing, this is a little bit thing to be careful of, is the timing of setting things, because when does this embed happen, okay? When does its prepare for segue happen, basically, relative to other things happening in that view controller that it's embedded in, like that thing's outlets being set, et cetera? And the answer is, it happens pretty early, okay, before outlet setting, just like all prepare for segues do. So a lot of times you're going to have to do whatever code you do in the prepare, also in your outlet setting, if they depend on each other. Okay, and we've already seen this in Photomania before. If anything you do in your prepare for segue that depends on an outlet, you're going to do it in prepare for segue. You might also do it in the outlet setter. Okay, so that whichever one happens second will do the actual work. Does everyone understand what I mean by that? No? Yes? Who does understand what I mean by that? Nobody. Okay, well, okay, it's maybe a little hard to conceptualize without seeing it, so in the demo I'll talk about it again and hopefully it'll make sense. All right, so let's do this demo. This is a very big demo. I think I have enough time to do it all. Let me notes here, make sure, in case I forget something. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? We are going to start with Photomania where we left off. So here's the exact Photomania we had uh, before. Um, where we left off. We, this time we're gonna work in this iPhone, in the iPhone storyboard, and then we'll copy it over to the uh, iPad storyboard. So we're kind of going back and forth working on each one. Today we're going to go work on the iPhone one. So what are we going to do here? So this, hopefully you recognize this, right? This is our storyboard. This is a bunch of photographers. We click on a photographer, we get all the photos by that photographer, currently in a table. So what I'm going to build is same UI here, almost exactly, except for that instead of a table of the photos, I'm going to put a map of the photos up. Okay, with a pin for every photo by that photographer. So I'm going to need a photos by photographer map view controller instead of a photos by photographer core data table view controller. Okay, I'm still going to pull all this out about core data and everything, but we're not going to be doing a table view. Does that make sense, what I'm going to do? All right, so let's go ahead and drag, create that view controller. So uh, a map view controller is just a view controller, so I'm going to drag out a view controller here. We'll put it under here because it's going to be replacing this guy right here, which is the table view uh, controller of it. Now, as with any view controller, I need a class for this. Right now, it's you know UI view controller, um, so I need a custom subclass. So let's go create that. And that custom subclass is going to be a regular old UI view controller. Oops, UI view controller. And I'm going to call it to be consistent, photos by photographer map view controller. I'm getting to be pretty long names here, but uh, I could call it map MVC, if it's kind of weird. Uh, so we'll call it map view controller, right? So photos by photographer map view controller. We'll put it where we put everything. We'll put it in with our controllers right there. We got that. Uh, in our storyboard, let's go ahead and set this thing to be a map view controller, here it is, photos by photographer map view controller. Uh, let's build the UI for this thing. Uh, actually, before we do that, I always like to do my public API for any cl new class. The public API for this class is exactly the same as the public API for the photos by photographer core data table view controller. Okay, in fact, we just copy and paste it here. It's this thing, right? Oops. And of course, we need the import here. Okay, so it's the same thing. You set this photographer in our map view controller, and instead of showing the photos by that photographer in a table, it's going to put them in a map view. So let's go back to our storyboard and build the UI for this thing. And so let's make a lot more space here and go like this. Get our assistant uh, editor, editor up here. Let's go to automatic mode, go here. So here is the code for our uh, map photos by Photographer map view controller, we don't need any of this business. Let's clear that out. Um, we're going to need a map view, so let's go ahead and grab a map view. That is just a view like text view or any other view. Here it is right here, a map view. So I'm going to drag that out, put this in here. Um, maybe I want to do its constraints, so I'll reset to const uh, suggested constraints. Let's go take a look at those, make sure it did something sensible. Oh, yeah, it looks very sensible, so it's going to stick to the size, so whatever size it, uh, our self.view is, it's going to stick to it. Um, let's create an outlet for this map view. So I'm just control dragging, I'll call it map view. All right, so we got an outlet there. Um, notice that we have uh, this uh, error and warning here. 
Okay, what's the problem? The problem is we have to import MK map view. So let's do that. Import map kit slash map kit. Now I told you that map kit, it's not enough just to import map kit like it is with everything else we've done so far. We have to go to our project settings over here at the top. And in our project settings, along the top, you're gonna see this thing here called build phases. And the build phases specifies what frameworks we link with. Link binary with bi libraries, okay? So don't forget this part, or when you run your app, it's gonna say, oh, no such class, MK map view. All right, so we're just gonna hit plus. Now when you do that, you're gonna see that iOS 7 has a lot of libraries and frameworks that you can pick from here. Um, and luckily it lets you search them, so I'm just gonna type map, and here I get map kit. So now I've included map kit, I'm linking it in with my application, so um, it'll work, okay? Um, all right, so we've got this map view. Uh, one thing uh, I wanna do right off the bat is set myself to be this map view's delegate, okay? Because I'm gonna use all those map view delegate methods we talked about in the slides. Um, so I have this here. So this is the setter for map view, and I'm just saying underbar map view is map view. And here I'm saying the map view's delegate to be myself. Of course, it's warning me because I have to implement MK map view delegate. So I will do that, MK map view delegate. And now the warning goes away because there are no required methods in the MK map view delegate protocol. All of them are optional, okay? Now, one other uh, thing that I probably want to do here is uh, what I always want to do when I have a public API that kind of sets my model, which is to do things like self.title equals the photographer's name. Okay, that's a nice thing. And um, uh, I also hear every time I set that photographer, I kind of need to reset the photos by photographer, right? Because the whole point here is that I show the photos by photographer. If you change the photographer, I need to change those photos. So to do the photos by photographer thing, I am going to create a um, new property, okay, called photos by photographer. So let's add that property, non-atomic strong. It's just gonna be an NS array. NS array uh, star photos by photographer. Okay, and this is gonna be of photo objects. So let's go ahead and import photo here too. We know we're gonna need that. Okay, and here's the getter for photos by photographer. Very, very simple, right? It's the getter, so I'm just saying if the photographer, photos by photographer is not set yet, then I'm gonna go fetch them from the database. So I create a fetch request, it's for photos. I create a predicate, who took equals self.photographer, and here, where in the table view I set the fetch results controller, here I'm actually gonna execute the fetch request in the context. And that returns an array, which is this array that I'm gonna store right here, and then we return it. Now every time we set the photographer, I better reset this thing to nil. Okay, it's gonna lazily do this fetch whenever someone actually wants it, but I better set it to nil every time the photographer changes, otherwise it's not gonna do this lazy instantiation. But this lazy instantiation is nice because this is core data fetch, but it still work. I don't want to do this work until someone actually wants those photos by the photographer uh, mechanism. All right, so the other thing we need to do is when our map view is set or when our model is set, we need to update the annotations. Okay, we've got all those annotations on the map that are going to be the photos by photographer. So we've got to update those. So we're going to have a method here called update, uh, what do I call it, map view annotations. And we're going to have to call this both from here when we set the map view and also from here uh, when we set our model. Because we don't know what order this is going to happen. We don't know if our model is set before our map view or if our map view is set before our model. Either way, this update map view annotations better do the right thing. Okay? So that's why we're both calling from both. So how are we gonna implement this update map view annotations? Well, I told you what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a photo object be an MK annotation so that all we need to do to do update map view annotations is add the photos to the map. Okay, so how are we gonna turn photo into an ID MK annotation? And the answer is twofold. There's two things we need to do. One thing, we need to fix our model, or our uh, you know, core data database, to have the latitude and longitude. Otherwise, if we don't know where the photo is, we obviously can't show it on there, right? So I'm gonna add latitude. Luckily, Flickr provides this information. 
longitude. And while I'm here, I'm also going to add thumbnail URL, and I'll show you what we can do with that in a moment, too. So thumbnail URL is a string. It's actually a URL, but string's the best we can do. Whereas the latitude and longitude are doubles, OK? Double precision floating point numbers. OK, so I'm just adding this to my database. I'm going to go up here and create my managed object subclasses for Photomania. I only changed photo, so let's just only regenerate photo. Uh, we'll put this same place as all we usually do. It's asking if I want to replace the other ones. Of course I do. And now our photo has a latitude and longitude. Okay. Notice these are NS numbers here because everything in the database is an object. Um, of course, we need to update Flickr's loader, our photo plus Flickr category, right, which does the loading of all this stuff, to load up the latitude. Here I have things of that. So here's the latitude being loaded up. Here's the longitude. It's just looking in the Floto dictionary for the latitude and longitude. I actually take the double value and then turn it into an NS number just in case this is a string, OK? Because strings implement double value, too. Well, they'll interpret themselves as a double value. So I'm just going to be double safe. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get back from Flickr, whether it's a string or a number in the JSON. So I'm just being safe there. And then here, the thumbnail URL, I'm just grabbing the Flickr photo format square, which is what you're using for your thumbnail also in your homework. Um, OK? So now we've got our data model being loaded up with uh, photos from Flickr that have enough information. Now we need to make photo be an MK annotation. And to do that, I'm going to add another category. Okay? I could put it in that Flickr category, but it's not really a Flickr thing that it implements MK annotation. So I'm going to create a new category called the annotation category on photo. Okay? We'll put that, it's still part of our model. Uh, here's the annotation uh, interface, okay, and, and this emp is empty. So what am I going to do here? Actually, all I'm going to do is say photo is an MK annotation. Okay, and I'll have to import map kit here. Okay, so I've said that photo is an MK annotation. Now I can put photos in that map view. Okay, but if I look at the implementation over here, you're going to see that there's a warning. What do you think this warning is? Nobody know what this warning is. Surely, yes. Yes, missing methods. Because I said here that I implement the MK annotation protocol, but I don't implement that coordinate thing. So if I click on this, it says property coordinate it has to be defined. OK, so let's implement coordinate here. It's really easy to do. We just have to return a CL location coordinate. And I'm going to get it by just getting my latitude and longitude as double values. Okay, remember these are NS numbers. These are doubles. Okay, so now I don't have that warning. Now a photo is in ID angle bracket MK annotation. And now I can just put a photo into a map view as uh, an MK annotation. So let's go back and do that. Here's my map view. Here's the update map view annotations. First, I'm going to remove all of our existing annotations. See, so I'm just removing all the annotations that are currently in the map view. And then I'm going to add annotations, self.photos by photographer. And I can, these are photo stars, but they're also ID angle bracket MK annotations. So I can call them here. Okay, if we look at the uh, documentation for add annotations, you'll say it takes an array of MK annotations. And, that, and a photo is that. I'm going to do another cool thing, which is I'm going to zoom the map in to show all the photos by this photographer. OK? Now, I'm doing this in an animated way, but that just, that's not really going to like zoom out and then zoom back in like I was talking about. It's going to zoom on over to where it is. So it's not a great animation. You'd probably want to do much, something much better um, than this. OK? So that's really all we need to make this work. Uh, one thing which you've, I'm sure, learned is that we've changed our core database model. So the photo mania that's already on my device or my simulator, I'm going to want to delete that, okay? Because its database is now incompatible. It doesn't have latitude and longitude and thumbnail URL in there. So let's go ahead and run this. Hopefully our network is working. We can get stuff from Flickr. There it is. We got some stuff. And now what we'd like to have happen here is we click, and instead of a table view here, right, we'd like to see this map. Okay? So how do we do that segue? 
Right? We have this iPhone thing here. We've got this nice map view thing ready to go. We want to segue to it. So this segue that goes here, we want it to go down here. Really easy to do. All we have to do is make sure it all fits on screen so I can show it to you. Here we go. I'm just going to segue by control dragging from this row in the photographer's table view down to our new one. Okay, it's a push because we're in a navigation controller. And notice it took away this segue because I can only segue from this row to one place. And now I'm segueing to our map view down here. Okay, so now we have the segue. Now what about photographer's control, uh, core data table view controller? It has to prepare for segue properly, right? So here's where it's prepare for segue with the photos by photographer core data table view controller. So we are going to do the same thing here with a uh, map view controller, okay? So here, this is almost exactly the same code, it's just that I'm doing photos by photographer map view controller instead of photos by photographer core data table view controller. And we have these because we have to import. So let's go and import our photos by photographer map view controller, okay? If we get rid of all our warnings, that's good. So now we have this segue, so let's try again. And hopefully our new segue will work. We got the photographers, we click, we got pins on the map, okay? Showing all those photos by that photographer. And if we click on a pin, it's actually gonna show us the title and subtitle. None of these have subtitles. Let's see if we can find somebody who has subtitle. There we go, there's one. This person gets around from Scotland all the way down to uh, somewhere off the coast of Africa there, okay? So this is kind of cool, but we can't do our next step of our segue. We can't segue to showing the photo and also, it wouldn't it be cool if we had a little thumbnail of the photo in here so that we could kind of look around at the various photos taken by this guy until we found the one we want, and then we'll click on something over here to segue over to our showing the photo in its grand, all its grandeur, okay? So let's do that. Let's put these accessory views in. Let's go back here to our map view controller. Make some space. All right, so here's our map view controller, what we've done so far. And now we're gonna do that map view delegate method. This is our first one. This is the one that returns an MK annotation view given a certain annotation. Okay, so this is called map view view for annotation. It's gonna give an annotation. That's gonna be one of our photos. And it's gonna ask us to return a view for that annotation. I think for speed here I have something. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this is going to do what we saw on the slides where it's gonna have a reuse ID. I this, by the way, is a good code snippet to have. You can see this is kind of completely generic for doing a view for annotation in a map view. Um, I like to use the name of my class sometimes as my reuse identifier. That's a pretty unique uh, thing to do for reuse. Here's the DQ. If the DQ doesn't work, I have to alloc init this thing. I still want it to show a call out. I want it to be a pin. And then here I'm setting up the view with anything I need to set up here, it's just setting the annotation. Um, so inside here is where we want to set up the left and right accessory views. So let's do that. So the left one is gonna be UI image view. Okay, so I'm gonna create an image view here. UI image view, alloc init. And I'm gonna actually alloc init with frame. And this is one of the places in iOS I really don't like. There is no way, no API to find out how big is that call out, okay? Because I'd really like to know how big that call out is so I can make my image view be a good size to really fit there, okay? So this is a place you have to unfortunately put magic numbers, okay? And the magic numbers I found that really work is an image view that is 46 by 46. That seems to really fit nicely in that left uh, call out accessory view right there. So that's an, um, kind of an unfortunate piece of this. So now I'm just gonna set that as the left call out accessory view. And then the right one is going to be a button. I just wanna do a button, so I think I have a code for that one, yeah, disclosure button. So that's this code right here. So I'm just gonna create a UI button, alloc init. Okay, I'm gonna set its background image to be this disclosure image I have right here. So let me go down here to my image assets and let's drag this in, like that. Disclosure, I don't have a high res version, but that's okay. This is kind of, your, this is not a great solution, by the way, to do an image here, because really we want to respect the tint color of the map view, and that arrow is blue. So that's bad. It'd be much better to either draw it 
or if we are going to use an image, you should come to Friday's section and understand how to change the color of an image using Core Image. Okay, that's what we're talking about in Friday's section this week. A uh, little plug for that. But anyway, for demo purposes, I'll use this thing. Then I'm going to size to fit this button to fit that image that I just did, and then I'm going to set it as the right callout accessory view right there. Okay, question. Is the quality size variable to change depending on the amount of objects you have? Or? Uh, you mean is the, the, the uh, you know, I'm not sure. I believe it will size. If you make a big view in there, it'll make it bigger, but it starts to not look very good. So you kind of want to pick sizes that make it stay the same size because the title and subtitle, it's a little bit, uh, the whole thing with the call out thing is a little bit kind of, you have to tweak it pixel by pixel or point by point, unfortunately. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got so far. All right, so now if we look at a photo and we do the call out, we have room for the image. We're not putting the image in there yet. And we have this little button, which when we click on, does nothing. Okay, so we're getting closer. So let's put this image in there and let's make it so clicking on this segues. All right, so how do we put this uh, image into the image view? Well, I'm going to have a little method to do it here called, what did I call this? Update left call accessory, yeah. So here's my method that does this. This looks like maybe a lot of code, but it's actually not that much. Mostly what I'm doing is introspection to find out if the left callout accessory view is in fact an image view. Because I might have multiple pins with different callouts. Some of them might be showing photos, but some might be showing something else. And maybe those are something else. They don't have an image view as the left callout accessory view. All right, so I'm both checking to make sure that my call, left callout is an image view. I'm also checking to make sure my annotation is a photo, right, and not something else. Because it's perfectly reasonable on a map to have annotations, some of which are photos, some of which are something else, okay, the hometown of the photographer or something like that. Um, so that's what mostly what this is, is just this introspection of those things. Once I have a photo and an image view, then all I'm doing is this horrendous image with image data, data with contents of URL. And why is it horrendous? Of course, because I'm blocking the main queue, but this is a demo, so I get to do it. You don't get to do it in your homework but I do. So this is going to block the main thread for a short amount while it goes out to Flickr to fetch it, but um, you get the idea. I put the warning in. I'm sure I'll go back and fix it some other day. Yes, sure. Okay, um, so that's that. Let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so now if we click on something and we click on a pin, hopefully we'll get an image. Maybe that guy didn't have, oh, no, that's not working. Why is that not working? Oh, I, no, that's not why. Uh, Okay, sorry. Oh, I see why. <laughs> because we never call this. Okay, it'd be nice to call that. It'd probably work better. So let's call that from here. Okay, this is the view for annotation. So I'm calling this left call out here from view for annotation, right? Because I'm returning the little view for annotation. That includes building the call out view. So that'll work a lot better, I'm going to guess. All right, so here we go here. Click this up, so nice, that looks pretty good, right? So if we click on each one, we kind of get a little look at it and kind of helps us decide which one we want to step on. We'll press on, we'll press on this one. Now there's a problem with the way I've done this though. Let's find somebody who has a lot of photos. Hopefully somebody has a lot of photos. Somebody, well, it uh, looks like 15 photos is the, or 16. All right, so let's click on this guy. When I click on this guy, look, it's taking a long time. Okay, this is a fast Stanford network, so uh, it's not too slow, but it's still, it's blocking the main thread, but it's blocking the main thread a lot. And why is that? That's because it's fetching the thumbnail image for all 16 of those photos, okay? Uh, all at once up front. So we do not want to do that. We only want to do this fetch when you click on the pin. So we're going to implement another map view delegate method. And you can see how many methods, delegate methods the map view has, quite a few. We want this one down here, did select annotation view. That gets called when the pin gets clicked on. So I'm just going to move this update left call out accessory view down to here. Okay, so now when we run, even this 16 guy is going to instantly come up because he's not doing any fetching. But when we click on this, a little delay. Okay, now I can't see all 16 of his things because they're all stacked up. It's a little problem with our UI. We would probably want to have some way to click other ones. You can kind of click other ones, but um, anyway. Uh, but now we want to, if I click here, I want to see this image in my image view controller full size. So now let's implement this uh, little thing. And that is going to do, we're going to do with another map view delegate method. This is the one I told you about. Call out accessory touched. It's the one up here. See it? Call out accessory control tapped. Okay. So this gets called whenever any left or right accessory view that is a UI control 
like UI button is, gets tapped. This gets called. Now, I only have one because the image view is not a UI control, so I don't have to worry about that. So inside here, I can segue. Okay? But now, how do I segue? Okay? I've never shown you how to do this. We did cover it in the slides, but I never showed you. How do I actually segue from here? Because if I go back to my storyboard, there's no pins for me to control drag from. How do I, it's, uh, what am I going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do here is segue from code. And here's how you segue from code. You control drag from the from view controller to the to view controller, just from the whole view controller, not from any button in here or anything like that. And if you had a lot of buttons in here, you could control back, drag from this bar so you don't accidentally control drag from a button. So I'm just going to, and I'm not control dragging from the map view here, okay? In fact, here I'm going to control drag from down here, okay? So here's my um, photos by photographer. Here's the, con the uh, icon that represents the controller itself. So I'm going to control drag from here up to this guy, if I can reach him. Oh well, trust me. I'm going to control drag from here to here. Okay, there we go. No, this to here. Sorry. There we go. All right, so I'm going to control drag from this view controller to this one. So I'm creating a segue here from that view controller to the other one, generically, from the controller to the other controller. And it's very important here I have to give it a name. So I'm going to call it show photo, because that's what it does. It shows this photo. Okay, why do I need to give it a name? Because from code, I have to refer to this segue, and I'm going to refer to it by name. Okay, and call it the show photo. So let's go back and do that. This is a one liner. I just say self, and I'm going to call this method in UI view controller, UI view controller called perform segue with identifier. And here I specify show photo. And notice I get to specify a sender. Okay, where does this sender come in? Well, this segue that I'm going to perform in code here still gets prepared for segue. It's a normal push segue, so it has to prepare for segue. And if we remember a prepare for segue, it takes a sender. And what is that sender? Well, in the table view controller case, remember the sender is the table view cell. So what would we want the sender to be here? Probably this annotation view. Okay. This annotation view right here is the annotation view that has the call out that we tapped that accessory view in. So that's going to tell us which annotation we're talking about, right? So that's the sender that we're going to see when we go do prepare for segue for this thing, all right? All right, so let's do the prepare for segue because this is a normal segue. It has to be prepared just like all the rest of the uh, segues that we have. And to do that, I'm going to, just like I did in table view, I'm, I have a little prepare here, which is right here. And this prepare kind of generally will prepare uh, this map view controller to segue to an image view controller. Okay? And it looks a lot like the other one. Okay, here I'm going to find out if the annotation that we're going to prepare. So we're going to prepare for view controller. This is going to be an image view controller to do a certain segue to show a certain annotation. And this had better be a photo because that's all I know how to do. So I'm checking here to make sure it's a photo. And if it is a photo, then I'm going to check the identifier. Same thing with table view. If there's no identifier, then if the kind of class is an image view controller class, then I'm going to segue to it. OK? So this, I'm going to call this from prepare for segue in a second. Let me go ahead and import image view controller. OK? Just so we don't have the warnings there. So everyone understand what this code does? Well, I do the code snippets for speed, but I want to make sure you understand all the code that appeared there. Okay. All right, so now we can do the prepare for segue, and it's going to be pretty easy. So void prepare for segue. Okay. And in prepare for segue, the sender is that MK annotation view. Right? So we know from that MK annotation view which uh, thing it is. So I'm just going to say if the sender is an MK annotation view, which it should be, Okay. Then I'm going to call this prepare thing that I did up here, this prepare view controller. Prepare view controller. And the view controller I'm going to prepare is segue.destination view controller. The segue is the segue's identifier. Oops, identifier. And the annotation we're going to show is what? The annotation is this sender, which is an MK annotation view, it's its annotation. 
So MK annotation view has a property called annotation, which returns the ID MK annotation, that, uh, which is what we want here, that that MK annotation view is showing. So I'm going to say MK annotation view sender annotation. Okay? Make sense? Okay. So we make it so we perform the segue when we call out accessory is tapped. Prepare for segue is going to get called when that happens. And we're going to call this thing to do the actual preparation, checking to make sure we're talking about photos, making sure we're segueing to an image view controller. OK? Everybody got that? All right, so let's see if that works. OK, so let's go to this guy. This is our world traveler here. Let's go click down here. It's got this, got a nice image view here. Let's try and click on this, and it segues. Okay, and we'll get the exact same kind of segue we got before. Make sense? Questions about that? All right, so that's really pretty awesome. In you know about 20 minutes, we were 25 minutes, we were able to add full map capability to our iPhone version. But what about our iPad, our iPad version? Uh, let's turn off my phone here and go do the iPad version. So the iPad probably wants to be slightly different uh, than this. Um, although I'm going to start off having it be very similar. What I'm going to do in the iPad is I'm going to get rid of this photographer's table and photos by photographer table. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to copy and paste what I just did here in this one. Copy over here. Paste. OK. Let's control drag. Push segue or sorry root view of this uh, split view controller. Let's go find everything. Make some more space. Here it is. Okay. So now we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We got the photographers here, and we're going to have the maps here. So let's go see what that looks like at first. All right. Is this working? Yes. Oh wait. We're going to have to. Sorry. We're going to have to stop here because we are going to crash because we changed our database schema. So let's get rid of that. Run again. So how will this handle like the app upgrades when you change the schema? OK, so the question is, if I were in the real world and I had apps on the App Store here and I changed my schema and my users upgrade, how would I handle that? And the answer is, and I, we don't teach this because I, I, you, know, you know how it is, time constraints, but uh, there's actually a mechanism for versioning your schema and then doing auto migration from previous versions, getting the data out of a previous version to the new schema. So you have to change your schema in a compatible way. Obviously, you want to keep all your user information, but that migration can be automated. So it's pretty cool, actually. Um, so check it out in the core data documentation how to do it. All right, so here's our photographers. And if I click on a photographer, then awesome, I get the map. OK, and if I click on these, whoo, that works. This is just awesome. It works great. Let's try and show the photo. Uh-oh, why doesn't that work? Because it's doing perform segue here, OK? And we don't use a segue on the iPad. We just go find the image view controller in our detail and update it directly, right? So we have to do the same fix we did when we made this work on, uh, with the tables. We got to do the same thing with the map. So I'm going to go back, back to my map view controller right here. And I'm going to put, some, I'm going to put a property in here that finds an image view controller in the detail of the split view I'm in if there's one there. OK, call this image view controller. And here's the property I'm going to add, right? So this property is going to be nil if I'm not in a split view controller where my detail is an image view controller, right? Otherwise, it's going to be that image view controller. You all recognize this code from our table view, right? Split view controller, last object, that's our detail. If it's in a navigation controller, I'll look in to see if it's the root view controller. And then if it's a view controller, uh, image view controller, I'll return it. Otherwise, nil. So on the iPhone, this is going to be nil, because it can't be a split view on the iPhone anyway. right? So this is cool. So now I know whether there uh, is an image view controller. So I could do something, for example, when I'm doing that segue. Where's that segue? Right here, this perform segue. I could say, if I have an image view controller, then just update it directly. directly. Otherwise, you can try this 
perform segue. By the way, there's really no way to try this perform segue without crashing. So you really got to know whether you're actually segueing. Okay? Luckily here, if I have an image view controller around, I know I'm not going to be segueing. And if I don't have an image view controller around, I probably do want to be segueing because I got to show the photo somehow uh, if I'm going to allow that, the, that little button to be there. So if I have the self image view controller here, I can just prepare it. So we've got the prepare uh, controller. I'm going to prepare the image view controller. Segway is nil. Uh, the annotation, what it, where's the annotation you want to show? Again, it's right here. Okay, view.annotation. Oops, oh, let's do that, don't I? Okay, so there's that. Okay, so I'm just going to prepare that image view controller if it's there, otherwise we'll segue. Everyone understand this? So let's go look at this, see how this works. All right, so let's look at some photos again. Let's, I don't know, let's find some photos like, uh, I don't know who we got here. Just, I don't know. So we got this. We'll click this. Okay, we got this right here. If I click this little button, it worked. Okay, so it uses the thing. If I go over here somewhere else, let's do uh, this one right here. Notice that that overlaps. I don't really like that UI very much, but um, it is what it is. Okay, so that's kind of okay. This is kind of okay, this UI. It's really not that great, though, because um, I'm showing that little thumbnail there, and then I, I'm all, I click on it, I'm also showing the big one. Why don't I just not have the thumbnail, not have the little blue arrow, and every time I click on a pin, just show the photo. There's no reason not to just to show the photo. So how would I do that? So just forget this whole thing of that little blue area. I don't even need that blue arrow. Let's do that. Let's go up here to, this is where we build the left and right accessory views right here. So I'm going to say, if I don't have an image view controller, then go ahead and put those callouts in there. Otherwise, don't put them there. And then also, uh, now that the callouts are there, aren't there, this is never going to get called in here because there's no callout accessory if I have the image view controller. So let's go ahead and cut this out of here. And let's put that code in select. So here's where it's selected. So when it's selected, let's go ahead and use control I here. Whoop. Oh, that didn't work. There, 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 there. Control I. There we go. All right, so when the pin is selected, when we click on the pin, if I have an image view controller around, I'll just prepare it. Otherwise, I will update the callout accessory views and all that stuff, which I don't have if I um, have an image view controller. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now let's click again here. Yeah, let's find somebody who has multiple, whoops, multiple photos like this guy maybe, okay. So let's click on one here, right? Automatically, as soon as I click on it, it's gonna update the image view, okay? So that's kinda cool, that's a nicer UI. I, I don't really need that thumbnail, I don't need the, um, the other uh, stuff on there, so that's cool. Uh, one thing though that's a little weird on it is watch this. So now if I go here, okay, now I've got Dead Man Jones, his photos, but I've got somebody else's photo on the right. That's kind of weird. Okay, that's kind of bad UI. So let's make it so that every time we show the photos by a photographer, let's just auto pick one. Okay, how would we do that? Very simple. When we um, update our view and map view annotations here, I'm just going to auto select a photo. But only in the case where I have an image view controller lying around. If I have an image view controller lying around, then I'll auto select a photo. And how am I auto selecting? Well, I'm just grabbing the first object out of our photos by photographer array, okay? And if there's any in there, then I'm going to select that annotation, okay? That causes the call out to appear. But it doesn't, when you select it with this, it doesn't call that did select method up here to get called, okay? This method up here, did select annotation view. This only gets called when the user selects it, okay? So the user didn't select it here, we selected it, so we still have to do that prepare ourselves. Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, so let's 
pick somebody here, click on that, and you can see it auto-selected the scooter one. I picked something else. We'll go here, it auto-selects one, goes here into auto-selecting one. So now we're kind of all in sync between the two, uh, between what's on the right and what's on the left. Okay, but if I click another one, it'll change it. Okay, so that's not bad UI. Kind of, kind of like it. it's kind of okay. But I'm going to show you another way to do this on the iPad to show you those embed segues. One could argue whether this is a better UI or the embedded one. You can kind of see them both and you can tell me what you think is better. But what I'm going to do is, you see where the sun is right there in that photo? I'm actually going to take this map view that's on the left and I'm going to embed it inside this image view. So that map view is going to be showing there. And so what we're going to see in this column is just the photographers. These will be photographers. Embedded where the sun is will be the map for whatever photographer we choose, and then we'll have our photo. And we'll still be able to zoom in our photo, zoom around. It'll be occluded, right? It'll be covered up, although maybe we could add a button somewhere that would hide that map and reshow it, a little bar next to the URL, because that map is just going to be a UI view in there. We can hide, set it's dot hidden. We could animate it transparency fading away, whatever we want it to do, because it's just going to be UI view. But the contents of that UI view are going to be the same contents that are in this map view over here, exactly the same. I'm going to use that exact same view controller. Okay, and this is, again, we're talking about view controller reuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, by the way, we notice we have warnings back in the code here. Why do we have this warning? That's because auto-selected photo is a photo star, and we don't import anything here that tells this code that a photo star is an MK annotation. Okay, so we have to go up here to where we import a photo, and instead import photo plus MK, or sorry, plus annotation. Okay, because this is where, this is the file in which we declared that photos were MK annotations. Everyone understand that? Okay, so you gotta make sure you import whichever interface defines that. Okay, so how are we gonna do this embed thing? Let's go over here to our iPad. Um, storyboard. All I'm going to do to start is to drag an embedded thing in here. So let's do that. This is a bit of a challenge when it comes to screen real estate. Let's go here. So the embedded thing, it's down towards the bottom. Here it is right here. You see it says container view defines a region of a view controller that it can, include, can include a child view controller. Okay. So I'm going to drag that into this view controller right here. This is our image view controller. So let's drag that in. Now when you drag this in, it's a bit of a pain in the neck to size this to where you want and all these things. But I'll show you another way when you have a big view like that, that you're dragging in and you want to place it somewhere to do it, which is to use the document outline. So here's the document outline. Here's my container. Notice it added it as a sub view of my scroll view, but I don't want to scroll that map around. I want it to sit on top of the scroll view. I actually want the scroll view on in the back and then the container view and then we can do our activity indicator. So that's one thing I can do is move it out from being um, a scroll view. And can anyone think of a way that I can place this container where I want? Magic word begins with an A. Down here. Yes, we can use auto layout, right? To specify exactly what we want. So let's fix its width and height. This is a case where we would want some magic numbers of width and height because we want to kind of decide how much of that view we want to occlude with the map, what the relative value is. And then let's also pin it to the top by the standard value. And then let's pin it over here uh, to the right. So we're going to put it in the upper right hand corner. And uh, let's see what that looks like, first of all. And notice we have the little yellow thing here because we have a misplaced view. And so I'm going to go ahead and fix that misplacement. And now let's go look and see how this looks like. Well, this doesn't quite look like I want because uh, it's under this bar. I don't really want under this bar. So it's a standard width from the top, but not under this bar. The way you can, by the way, control whether things are under the bar is select your whole controller and inspect it. And you'll see down here there's extend edges. Okay. So if I say under top bars, no then it moves that container down. Now that created some auto layout things both for this little spinner guy and this, so let's fix those. Right, because we moved everything down a little bit, so those need to be put back relatively uh, to where they should be. So that's a way to do it. Now of course, now the image view is not under there and I might want one and not the other. And we can certainly set our auto layout constraints to whatever we want, but I just wanted to show you this extend edges thing. Some of you discovered this when you were doing your homework uh, number four, but uh, now you know. So, Okay, one thing that happened through all of this 
uh, we got this container is we have to specify what's in this container and it actually put something on here. Okay, it's hard to see, let's move it down. It actually put this, this is a generic UI view controller. If we inspect it, you can see it's a generic UI view controller. So this view controller self.view is going to appear in here. But I don't want this view controller self.view in here, so I'm going to delete that. Instead, I want this view controller's self.view, the map view controller, right? So how do I do that? This is a segue, control drag. So I'm control dragging from the container to here. Only option I'm going to have is embed because the source of this is the container. And now I've embedded that in there. Okay? I don't want this segue anymore because I don't want the, when I choose a photographer, I don't want to load this table up. So let's get rid of that. Okay? And so now we have this here. Let's move it down again. Okay? So this photos by photographer map view is going to appear inside here. Now this is a segue. Okay? Maybe we would call this embed map or something like that, because that's what this segue does. This segue has to be prepared, just like any other segue. This is a normal segue. Who is going to do the preparing? Well, it's the view controller into which this is embedded. That is this, which is an image view controller. How does this photos by photographer need to be prepared? It needs the photographer, right? That's its public API, just to remind you over here. Photos by photographer map view controller needs a photographer. So if we're going to prepare it, we need to pass a photographer. Well, that's a problem because this image view doesn't have the photographer. All the image view has is the image. Okay? So we're going to have to create a little subclass of image view controller, which I'm going to call photos by photographer image view controller, and it's going to pass the photographer on through. Okay? So we're going to segue to it like we are already segueing, it's not really segueing, but we're setting this detail view controller, we're preparing it uh, already, um, but we're going to have to prepare it with uh, this photographers. So let's create that subclass, of this controller. Okay, it's a subclass of image view controller. We're going to call it photos by photographer image view controller. Okay, we'll put it with our controllers. Okay, uh, now in the iPad only, I'm going to change this to not be an image view controller anymore. I'm going to change it to be a photos by photographer image view controller. Okay, so now it's a photos by photographer image view controller, which is this thing. The public API of this, again, it's the same as all these other photos by photographer thing. It's this. Actually, watch this. We'll copy this, uh, paste that, put that there, put that there. Get rid of that. See, going back and forth too much. So it has a photographer. It's a photos by photographer, but this is an image view controller. So it has a photographer. What does it do when it gets the photographer? Well, let's look at that. In fact, before we even look at that, let's talk about that embed segue and, and having it prepare. So I got that code here so we can look at it. Okay. I'm going to put this up here. Talk about all this in a second here. And I'm going to import. Photos by Photographer Map View Controller. All right, so let's look at this code that comes in. So this is Photos by Photographer Image View Controller. It is right now trying to handle preparing that embed. So it's preparing this segue right here. It's doing the prepare on this segue. Okay, how is it doing that? Well, it's looking to see if the destination view controller is a Photos by Photographer Map View Controller, which it should be. That's what we're embedding. Right? Photos by photographer map view controller. And if it is, then it's going to set the photographer. Completely obvious, right? And it's setting it to self.photographer. That's this method right here in photos by photographer image view controller. That's all good. But notice also I'm grabbing a hold of this photos by photographer map view controller. Why am I grabbing a hold of this thing? Well, I'm grabbing a hold of this because this might get called before this gets called. Okay? In other words, before my image view controller, photos by photographer, image view controller, gets its photographer, it might be asked to segue to the embedded one. And it might not have this photographer yet. So we need to go here and in our set photographer, which we always do this anyways, things like self.title equals photographer.name, stuff like that. Um, we, here we need to, 
if we get here after we've embedded, then we need to say self.mapViewController photographer equals our photographer. Okay, so this is the exact same thing we're talking about before. Prepare can happen before the setting, setting can happen after the, you know, back and forth. So we have to do it in both of these places. That make sense? Okay, good. Now I'm seeing more nodding heads this time. That's good. Because when I talked about it in the slides, you were like, huh? Okay, but now you understand. If we set our model after we are asked to prepare that embed, then we have to go back and set the uh, photographer. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is do the preparing of this guy now. This guy needs to be prepared. It's the detail view controller, right, of this split view. And so now when we click in the photographer's thing, we need to prepare this guy by passing him the photographers. So that's really easy too. Here's where we prepare, right? So right now in our photographer's uh, table view, we know how to prepare the photos by photographer core data table view. We know how to pair the prepare the photos by photographer map view controller, and now we know how to prepare the photos by photographer image view controller as well. Okay, we prepare them all exactly the same way, right? But they're all different destination view controllers. So let's import, make that go away. Photos by photographer image view controller, and now we can run. Okay, so you can see our map comes up in the United States. We haven't chosen a photographer, so there's, there's no photos on there. Let's pick a photographer, this guy. Okay, here's our map. We can kind of see where in the world we are. Looks like we are in Taipei, okay? And it's showing the scooter thing. If I click on the other one, we get that one, okay? So this is quite a different kind of UI. I can still zoom in out here. I can still move this map around. Um, I could rotate it around. I can uh, zoom in, all right? Okay, I can click on another photographer here, right? Okay, make sense how that's working? So, I mean, again, you can argue which is the better UI. This one's kind of cool. I think if I had a little button up next to URL that said map, that was maybe a little map icon, I pressed it and the map would disappear and reappear. This might be kind of cooler because if you look at this UI, I have my photographers and my photos and the selected photo all on screen at the same time. Right? So I can be zooming in, looking at the thing I want, clicking on another photo by this guy, switching to another photographer, uh, back and forth, all right at my fingertips so that I don't have to, you know, be segueing and things changing and all that. Make sense? Okay. That's all I have for you today. And I will see you on Monday. Good luck with your homework that's due on Friday. And I'll be here for any questions you have. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.